Hey guys, Jay Anthony, welcome back to the channel. And uh, yes, I'm still alive and doing just fine. Um, thank you guys for all the concern messages and for allowing me to have a little bit of a retirement from YouTube. Uh, but let's jump in. So we have a new watch review today. I know it's been a long time. This one has been a really long time coming for me. Um, I've wanted this watch for 12 years. So with all that said, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. This is gonna be a two-part video. We're gonna start off with the unboxing, because I know you guys like that, um, of when I actually opened the watch. And then we'll jump into a full review too, so you get both aspects in one video. All that said, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing and then the review. All right, well, uh, here we go, guys. Here's the, the big unveiling. I have wanted this watch literally for over a decade. I will never forget the, uh, I wanna say it was end of 2008, it might have been 2009, but I want to swear it was 2008. I went into Tapper's Jewelry Store at 12 Oaks Mall in Novi, Michigan, uh, when they first got the initial stock of these watches. And they had just gotten one in, and I'd heard about it, and I'd seen about it from Basel, and nobody had them. And I just remember thinking it was so cool that they had one in. And you know, I was this punk kid at this point. At the time, I guess I was 20 years old. Definitely couldn't have afforded anything like this at the time. And they humored me and they took it out of the wrapping that they had and they let me hold it and look at it. And ever since that day, I have wanted this watch. And so let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I took the outer box off just so you guys couldn't see my address and I just ran my finger under here to break this tape. And Here we go. So this is absolutely box and papers. Get rid of that. Oh boy. And uh, is that raised? Yeah, that's raised. The crown on these boxes, I guess, is raised these days. Kind of cool. Um, before I get started, I'm sure you guys are gonna ask me what am I wearing. I'm wearing my uh, Ponderai Radio Mirror 287. Um, another pretty big sports watch. I love this thing, but anyway, just in case you were wondering. But yeah, back to the video. So uh, Rolex Crown is actually raised on this box. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's cardboard, but hey, it feels all right. But um, this is what we came to see. A little Rolex uh, relief down here too. And then the, uh, the infamous Rolex green box. Tiffany's got their blue and uh, Rolex does their green, and I love how they do the little gold crown on these boxes too. Let me get this out of here. And um, yeah, there's a beautiful crown. Let me zoom in here on this guy. The box looks nice. Uh, I would say, you know, since I'm wearing my Panerai, the Panerai comes with these beautiful wood boxes which are beautiful. This isn't a bad box, it's nice. Um, but I, I think Panerai has a little bit better of an unboxing experience, but I do love the green. It's a cool looking box and uh, I do like the crown logo, but without further ado, let's take a look at it. So uh, this does have box and papers. So let me unload this here off camera just in case my, cause my serial number and stuff is gonna be in here. Yeah, it's in here in just a sec. Um, so it comes in this little thing. We got a warranty card here. I don't want to show you the flip side because it's got my serial number on it. But if we unload this. We have the warranty booklet and Rolex service network. I guess this is the location of all their service centers in the US and abroad. We have the Rolex Deep Sea User's Guide. Oh, that's cool. That's got like, um, it's got like a 3D effect. That's really cool, actually. Rolex, your warranty, how to use the glide lock. Uh, that's right, yeah, those things are cool. Flip lock, glide lock. You can see right there, actually, that's part of the glide lock system for the quick adjustment. It's a super cool feature on modern Rolex watches. How to set a watch, I think I can figure that one out. The uh, helium escape valve. Oh, and this is actually how the case is put together. Um, you guys may or may not know, 
but the bottom, the case spec on the Sea Dweller Deep Sea is actually titanium. It's different than the normal Sea Dweller and actually any other Rolex. So this is not a solid case back. It actually has an outer ring that holds in a titanium puck, basically with a, an O-ring around it. And you basically end up with what this, like uh, a case within a case effect with this super thick sapphire crystal. So this actually gives you a sense of why the watch is so thick when I pull it out here. Um, you basically have two cases in one almost and that huge titanium piece on the back. And that gives this watch an incredible depth rating of over 12,000 feet. Anyway, Rolex factory service, AKA why you should send your watch to us so we can charge you lots of money. Oh, that's cool. That was about the, this is how they're servicing apparently a day just, but like a disassembling the movement, lubrications, timing. Some guy looking official and fancy in a lab coat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they look super professional. Great little marketing piece for uh, you to go to their service centers, right? And there's a, a time graph or two. They're keeping track of uh, how accurate the watch is and beat air and all that good stuff. And that is a 4130. That's actually the movement that was in my Rolex Daytona that I sold years ago that I never should have sold. That's actually the column wheel from the 4130 movement. Dumbest thing I ever did was sell this watch for like 8,500 bucks and now they're like 16, 17. But, um, Anyway, we'll, uh, we won't relive that path, but enough of this nonsense. Let's take a look at the watch. And um, this cleaning cloth has like a, a sponge in it. That's interesting. Anyway, here we go. Holy crap. Wow. Um, this has to be the most misunderstood sports watch in the modern Rolex range. I don't know what the deal is with these, um, but I feel like a lot of people don't understand these things and think that they're kind of ungainly and weird. Um, or if they do like them, they like the deep blue model, which has the blue gradient dial. This watch actually, to me, I prefer in black. Um, I like things a little bit more subtle. And these things are super comfortable to wear. I've had the, the fortune, fortunate ability to be able to review these in the past and wear them and check them out. Um, these things get a reputation as they're so thick, as you can see here. I mean, the case of the watch is very thick. I want to say it's about 18 millimeters. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, but I think this is because, as I mentioned, you have this dual case going on. But the reality is, is once you get used to it, it feels very natural. And I mean, this to me is a definitive Rolex sports watch. And the reason for that is this is the ultimate, you know, technology showcase for Rolex. I mean, the Submariner, they print money for Rolex. They make a billion of them. And everybody as their first sports watch that can afford something nice tends to buy a sub. Uh, great watch, classic proportions. It'll always be a classic. It'll always be in style. But if you want the true definition of kind of Rolex ingenuity, engineering, and just kind of, and, I mean, uh, just, just the, the top of their technology, this is the watch you need to get. The thing I like about this thing for a multitude of reasons is one is they're reasonably rare, especially in the black dial. The ones that, that you do see around are the blue gradient dial. And if you do see a Rolex sports model, nine times out of 10 or more, you're gonna see somebody wearing a sub. If they're wearing a sea dweller, they're wearing the smaller sea dweller. Um, you never see these. And I love that it has a classic Rolex look, but that not everybody's rolling around with this on their wrist. The second thing is if you're into engineering and I am just an engineering nerd, this is the top of their technology. This thing is 12 X what a Submariner could do. Not that anybody needs that kind of technology, but this is the watch that really showcases what Rolex is truly capable of. This is the best of the best, the best divers watch that they offer in their range. The top technology, the top certifications, the top capabilities. You get the helium escape valve, you get all these cool features and they're rare. And to me, this, this to me is the pinnacle of what I think of when I think of a Rolex sports watch, especially the diver series. But let's go ahead and take it off of this cushion here. Oh. And uh, let's go ahead and get a closer look. Let me just wipe it off here. So here it is as a closer look and uh, God, this thing is beautiful. I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think this thing is absolutely spectacular and you can see the thing I love so much about modern Rolexes and part of the reason that I've been transitioning my vintage collection to a modern collection is I love these new ceramic bezels. Um, you can just see the way the light captures the ceramic. It just 
I just think it really elevates this watch like leaps and bounds beyond vintage Rolexes. And the markers stand out so much because they're actually coated in platinum. And it, it just, the way the light captures this bezel, I, uh, my camera is never gonna do it justice. It looks fantastic. And I mean, that just is just evidence that again, Rolex has not cut corners. You know, you have this beautiful ceramic bezel with the platinum numerals. Um, you've got all the hour markers are actually white gold. Um, and then they're coated in this, this beautiful luminescence, which glows blue at night. I'll be sure to, to show that later on. And this watch just feels like a tank. Um, here you can see that lovely helium escape valve, which it, uh, you know, it looks just kind of like a hole inside the case, but um, it's really cool. I mean, for those of you who aren't familiar with what a helium escape valve does, if you were to do, you know, some real deep sea exploration, spend a lot of time on the bottom, over time, helium can actually leak into your watch. And what happens is, is it leaks in slowly over time, but it takes a very long time to get back out of the case. So if you're inside uh, a decompression chamber and you're slowly making your way back up to the surface, um, if you're not able to allow that gas to escape, what can actually happen is it can literally blow the crystal out of the watch from all that pressure. So uh, this little valve here, as pressure is applied to it over time, it'll actually open and slowly allow that helium to escape so that it's not gonna blow the crystal off of the watch. And um, you know, there's just so many cool things on the deep sea. So you of course have the normal Rolex trip lock crown, which is a screw down crown which is something that is a hallmark of all Rolex oysters. Um, you unscrew it, you might be able to seal it up in here, the little bit of that uh, seal that's in it. This watch winds beautifully. It has the old school 3135. The newer ones have the 32 version. Um, these old 3135s are bulletproof. I've had them in multiple watches. I've never had an issue with them. They run forever. Uh, 28,800 beats per hour. Uh, about 31 joules, I want to say, and about a 48-hour power reserve. The newer movements have a 70-hour power reserve. Um, but these things, literally, I just, you know, people will get luxury watches, and then they're super careful about what they do to them and what happens to them. I don't have that concern with Rolexes at all. I could smack this thing into a wall, and I could care less. Like, it, these watches will just take a beating. Um, so many of these expensive watches people buy that are beautiful works of art are extremely fragile, and the first time you bump them into something or drop them, uh, you're looking at a couple thousand dollar repair bill. But Rolex, these things are just built to a crazy standard. And, you know, as it's a Rolex, it just moves with such precision. I mean, changing the date, it just, everything just feels so smooth. So well made. I just, it's one of those things, if you've held a bunch of watches and then you try one of these, you'll feel it. The Rolex quality is something you feel. Um, it's hacking, so you can stop the second hand. Go ahead and screw this back in. This bezel, I just love how the platinum shows up on the ceramic. It is so pretty. And it just turns so nicely. Again, you can just set it to your minute hand and as time elapses, you can keep track of your time. Super useful feature if you were diving, obviously, your bottom time, your oxygen time. But, you know, every day you can use this to time all sorts of things just by lining this dot up. I find this so useful. You know, I, I own a chronograph. Actually, I own several chronographs. I've owned several chronographs. They're good for keeping track of time, but this to me is, you know, foolproof, super easy way to do the same thing. And there's nothing mechanical about it, so there's nothing to ever go wrong. I love it for that. Um, as always with Rolexes, you have this beautiful, clear, crisp printing. Um, I know it's kind of a, a thing some people hate, but you have the original gas escape valve uh, ring lock system on the dial. That's kind of a love it or hate it. To be honest, you really don't see it. I mean, I, I know it's showing up on camera, but it's not super in your face um, in person. It's just I think the way the camera's catching it, the way pictures catch it, but it actually doesn't really look that obnoxious in real life. Um, so original gas escape valve, talking about this guy. And then the ring lock system is actually that inner case I was telling you about. You're seeing that on that ring, that's part of the inner case. And then the other part of that case is actually on the case back. So as you may be able to see, the center of this case is actually a different color than the rest of the 914L stainless steel that Rolex uses. And the reason is this actually outer ring is separate. It's not a solid piece of the case back. So this little outer ring unscrews and then the center part, this like puck thing, actually if you could see it, is titanium. 
and that is another huge feature that makes this watch so capable and as you can see this is one of the very few Rolexes you will ever see riding on the back of it mentions here that it's good to 12,800 feet or 3,900 meters I mean that's just insanity and I like too that this is one of the few Rolexes they actually bother to do anything with the case back most Rolexes, their case backs are so boring, but the fact this actually has some printing on it and it's got this beautiful titanium piece is just so nice. And, you know, this has a newer Oyster style bracelet, so much nicer than that crap they used to put on these watches. Um, you do, of course, have screw out links and there is a diver's extension here. So you can get it over a wetsuit. Nice little uh, Rolex crown on the back of it. But this has one of the best features Rolex has ever come up with, which is the flick block. So you can literally lift this little piece up here and then extend and retract the bracelet to change its size on the fly. One of the most useful features I've ever seen on any watch. And it's something you can even do when it's halfway latched. So here's, they have this new latching mechanism, which is so much nicer than those old crappy flip overs. You can have that part locked in still raise this guy up and so you're not going to let it fall off your wrist and you can adjust it just like this on the fly it is such a useful feature snap it back in and then you have this double security here with a crown on it super nice i just i love this watch um and it's really wearable i know a lot of people think these aren't now if you have really small wrist i get it probably not for you but you know honestly if you have you know, six and three quarter wrist or bigger like myself, it really isn't that bad. It takes a while to get used to for sure, something this size, you know, just like, but I'm, you know, I'm the kind of guy that would wear this, my Panerai, but I also wear 38 millimeter watches. It's just something you kind of get used to. And um, I think after time, it won't feel like anything else. Um, she is pretty thick, uh, that's for sure. But you know, this is just a technological, technological show to force, I mean, the titanium case back, the ring lock system. I mean, the fact that this thing is good at 12,800 feet, it's just crazy. I mean, think about it. this is over 12X capability of what you get on your standard sub. And it's a lot rarer. And not everybody and their mother is wearing one on their wrist. And you have all the modern Rolex features. It's just super cool. So without any further ado, let's just throw this thing on the wrist. I should also show you, you have this nice little uh, Rolex etching inside the bracelet here too on the clasp, like a frosted feel, it's cool. Anyway. And there we go. I feel so fortunate to finally own one of these things. And uh, I love it. I feel like this is probably the only true modern Rolex sports watch that is underappreciated. You know, I know everything now with this whole stainless steel scarcity and everybody's fighting for Submariners and stuff. And the Daytonas are just stupidly expensive at this point. This is really the only watch that you can buy for, you know, at retail or under retail for a used one. And it's just crazy to me because in a lot of ways, this is the best of the bunch in terms of the technology and the build quality and what you get for your money. Um, it, and it's so unique and so different and reasonably rare compared to all the other watches. Um, I really think in time people are going to finally figure out that this is the watch that they should have been focusing on in the first place. It's not for everyone, but it really is the king of the hill of Rolex sports models, especially their diver series. And it's just, it's a dream come true for me. I'm really, really grateful that I finally get to own one of these suckers. So really hope you enjoyed the review. And uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump back. All right, guys, really hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you so much for tuning in. More content is coming, and I'm also going to be visiting Bernard Watch in the near future, hoping to take a look at a Hulk and some other things that I've been uh, a little bit behind on. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and a subscribe. I know there's a lot of you out there that have joined in the last couple months when I've kind of been absent on a little bit of a, a mini retirement. Um, thank you so much for tuning in the channel. I really appreciate it. The fact that I have you know over 30,000 subscribers now is beyond what I could have ever hoped for, and it means a lot to me, um, and more content is coming. To those of you that have been wondering where the heck I've been, and I've known for years, and I've known a lot of you for many years, um, everything is fine. I just wanted to take a little bit of a break, and I was con contemplating actually retiring from YouTube, um, as I just do this as a hobby, but I'm thinking I'll stick around uh, for the near future anyway. 
as I do still enjoy doing this. And the reason is I just, you know, I've been through a lot of stuff in life and um, a lot of crazy things. And I've just, my values and what I enjoy doing as I've been on YouTube and things in life have changed. And I'm a very different person now than I was when I started this channel. And when I started this channel, I was a little bit more materialistic and I really liked the idea of, you know, kind of collecting a bunch of watches and being out there and having some status in the community and all that. And just, you know, I'm competitive and wanted to build my channel and be the best. Um, as life has gone on, those things really don't mean much to me anymore. And spending time with the people I care about and doing what I love has been far more forefront to me. Um, but fortunately, um, this is something I still just enjoy doing for the sake of doing it. I love talking with the community and I still love watches. And so I found a way to kind of get back into this and still enjoy it for different reasons. And so while I may not care anymore about being the biggest channel out there or having the most expensive watch collection or all these superfluous things, I do still really adore you guys and I love being part of this community and I really, really love that you guys are out there and support me and appreciate my content. I thought when I left YouTube that uh, people wouldn't really miss me and to be honest, I'm surprised at all the outreach that I've gotten from you guys about where have I been and why aren't my videos coming out anymore. So thank you guys so much for the support. It means the world to me. Um, I'm so happy to be part of this community again. So without further ado, um, I'll catch you guys soon. I promise stuff's coming. Uh, in the near future. Take care, guys, and I'll see you real soon.